I want to start this video off by saying thank you guys so much for 10,000 subscribers. It has truly been one of the coolest things I've ever experienced in my entire life. So I want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much for 10K. I appreciate it. And please continue to stick with me throughout the progression of my channel. Now, bringing up my channel, I started uploading October 8th of 2022, exactly a year ago, uh, in like two days, right? And I would probably post this video in a couple days, but I'm recording it on the 5th, probably just gonna edit it and get it out because you guys are requesting this video so much. For the scoreboards, unfortunately, as I've said, you know, in the comments, you can't get the scoreboards in the game. All of the scoreboards are meant to be added cosmetics for you guys to add authenticity, uh, to add like more realism and just uniqueness to the videos. So unfortunately, there's no mod. There's no nothing to download, you know, for you guys to get them in the game and have them at the bottom. I play Retro Bowl just like you guys. It looks the same. If you guys watched my last video, you would see that I had three different games in them. None of them had scoreboards, but they did have little alterations to make the scoreboard look different. One, I moved all of the little, you know, information from the top. One of them I moved into like a little box, kind of like 1990s style scoreboard, add a little drop shadow to it. And then another one, I literally just moved the screen to the left. So there's different ways to make the scoreboards look different or better or unique. That's all without Photoshop or anything. Now, the rest of this video is gonna be kind of specific to you guys. If you wanna make Retro Bowl YouTube videos, you know, if you want to add scoreboards to videos, this is how you can do it. But unfortunately for everybody that just wants to play it and have a cool, you know, scoreboard, that's not that's not possible, unfortunately. Now I'm hoping the more of you guys like this video and share it with, you know, the devs or just talk about it, maybe they'll think, huh, they really want to add new presentation styles to the game. I think adding presentation makes the game feel unique. It makes each game feel like its own atmosphere. I've added ESPN scoreboards. I've added Fox scoreboards, CBS scoreboards. I've made my own. I've made like three or four of my own. You can make them really unique as much as you want. It's all about how, how much depth you're willing to go to. Now, I started to get burnt out on making scoreboards because at some point you're literally zooming in frame by frame to find that exact spot, at least for me, because I'm a perfectionist to where everything, you know, the down changes or, you know, the quarter ends or like, you know, I have like a rolling scoreboard. So that way, whenever I score a touchdown, the score rolls up from zero to six, you know, and then you add the extra point. So it can be very tedious, although I love it and it looks great and it definitely makes the video stand out. It can be kind of, you know, it can take a lot longer. That might add to the video. It might not. It depends if you guys don't value the scoreboards. Some people do, some people don't. Some people say, oh, I love to listen to you while I play Retro Bowl. Okay, well, then all of the time I'm spending making a scoreboard very particular, you don't even see the scoreboard. So other people say, oh, I love it. You know, that's how I know you. So it really, you really have both ends of the spectrum. But for the rest of the video, I do just want to say thank you guys again so much for 10,000 subscribers. If I had 50 subscribers, 100 subscribers, 1,000 subscribers, I'd still be making videos. It is truly unbelievable to see this level of growth and the amount of support. And it is it is so awesome to be able to read all of your guys' comments. You know, the Discord has grown from like, 40 people you know not even a month ago now it's almost at 300 so again thank you guys I, I really couldn't do it without you if you just wanted to find out how to get the scoreboards you realize you can't get them even though i've said that and you don't make youtube videos then this is this isn't for you i mean again appreciate you get ready for the next episode of the vanderbilt rebuild i guess because this is going to be strictly for people that want to make videos because that's how you would make this you would have to add it as an overlay so for you guys keep watching. As you can see here, all I'm doing is just going on my phone and looking up sc scoreboards. You know, which one do I want to, you know, emulate? So like I said, for instance, this one, this Fox style college football scoreboard, I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to go to Adobe Express. Adobe Express is the app I use. I've never edited a single thumbnail uh, or anything, uh, scoreboards included, on my computer. So it starts by finding the scoreboard that you want to emulate. So, you know, I just save the picture here. And now I have obviously a preset because I've already made the scoreboard and I'm not going to make an entire brand new scoreboard for you guys. This is what I would do. I would start by taking this photo i put the order all the way down and if you don't know how to use photoshop you can teach yourself just go in it and mess around with it for a little while you'll figure it out i'm sure there are tutorials on youtube but nevertheless so basically now i'm just kind of trying to get it in a spot where i can see it 
And what I would do from here is I would start taking, there's a button where you can add shapes. I would just find the rectangle or whatever it is and I would start to adjust it to try to replicate what these shapes I'm seeing in the background are. There's there's a, obviously a long rectangle and then there's a rectangle on top, rectangle on the bottom, and a little bit smaller. You know, I have the logos put angled on both sides. You know, I you obviously would just look up Vanderbilt's logo, Tennessee's logo on Google, save the images and then size them up, put them in the right spot and get the text you know what's the what's the closest font i could get to what i'm seeing in the actual scoreboard you know uh, you know and then also the timeouts as well so the timeout bar is just a long black bar where i have little bars that have the same color cutting them in into thirds so that's how you kind of have like that that timeout looking thing and when you're in the actual video and you're editing it i just cover up each little bar whenever I use a timeout with that exact color. So now I'm going to the shapes. You can see this is the shape I use for almost everything. It's just a square, but you can pull it and move it around. And you know, this is how I made the black bar and that black bar is very important. I use black for all of my quarter lengths. I use black for all of my, you know, first, second, third downs, because I'm using a lot of the assets that Retro Bowl is giving me in the game. At the top of your screen, you see all these, the black bar that says third quarter, volunteers up 27 to 14, and you know, first and 10. I'm using all those assets. So right now here, you can see, I'm actually gonna make the TCU scoreboard for a bowl game that we might be attending. So I'm finding a logo I wanna use for the scoreboard. Here's a Horn Frog logo. And obviously Tennessee Volunteers, as you guys haven't seen that video yet, it's gonna be out. I've already used the scoreboard, so I don't need to do that. So I'm, I have this preset basically in my Adobe Express. I'm gonna change it over from Tennessee to TCU. I'm gonna, again, I'm cross-referencing that scoreboard in the top, in the top, you know, the Ohio versus San Diego State. So I wanna move the name over, it looks like. Obviously this Tennessee logo doesn't need to be here anymore, so that can go. Kind of size it up to make sure it's the same size as the Vanderbilt one, and then obviously gonna angle it the other way to replicate the scoreboard on the top. Hopefully you guys are following all of this. Uh, like I said, it's gonna be a little bit more tedious to actually make the scoreboard itself, but once you have the base, you you're good you can just change out the change out the team name change out the logo and you know again if there's like a ranking like 23rd you know you just put it up in the top right now i try to make that straight and the names are angled so that's just how from what i've seen that's how it is horn frog is going to be the name not the volunteers and i'm trying to kind of find a color i like here uh, i wanted to do black to kind of make it kind of stand out from the logo but i didn't like it so then i'm like color picking the actual color of the of the team so that way maybe it fits in a little bit more. So now that that's all done, I'm kind of sizing it up. And you'll always be cross-referencing the size and of the text on one side or the other to make sure everything's very even. So now at this point, the orange isn't applicable. We need to color pick and get the TCU purplish blue. And again, those little bars that are cutting that black bar to make the timeouts, they need to be the same color so you can't see them. And I have that black bar on the bottom where the quarter length and stuff I have that covering the ends of those little bars. So now the scoreboard's pretty much done. You just swap and repeat. Now, again, it's gonna take you a little bit of time to make the scoreboard as a whole. That's where you really need to start cross-referencing the pictures ahead. So if you, again, if you want the ESPN scoreboard, ESPN scoreboard, you know, Georgia versus TCU, you go find it, you save the image, you put it on the top half of one and you just start making shapes. You start trying to replicate that as close as possible, downloading logos, that type of stuff until it looks as close as you possibly can. So you save this scoreboard. You can see you download it as a transparent image. So there's there's nothing in the background. I saved it, I didn't really like it. I wanted to move the, the title, uh, you know, the horn frogs around a little bit. Eventually you get a finished product. Again, you're gonna save that as a transparent image and you're good to actually put it into your editing software at this point. Obviously you can see that this bottom layer here is, is the game itself, right? And I have my face cam over the top of it. Um, and also you would actually, because there's no numbers here for the score, you would just simply go ahead and make a quick text uh, you know, it wouldn't be under here though. It'd be on the top. So we're gonna put it on the top real quick. Let's say the score was 13 to 10. I would do 13. I change the font to something I like. So we'll do this one here. Change the font, make it a little bit bigger and you can kind of just move it up and down. So like I said, we'll say the score is 13 to 10. So I'm gonna sneak that in there and then I'm literally gonna copy this layer, click up here and paste it and move it over. Again, if you don't have experience with photo with you know editing software at all i didn't either i've only been doing youtube for literally one year almost to the day and if you scroll back which i don't recommend it but if you scroll back 
you'll see some bad videos. I didn't know how to format videos correctly. Uh, so, you know, you have black bars on the top and bottom. I was using a headset mic. I just have a little microphone here. I record on a, on a nice iPhone. I have a separate iPhone. Before I was just recording on a face cam. You can make videos with what, with what you need, okay? You don't need a lot of cool, fancy shit. And the sooner you start, if you really have aspirations to do so, the better you'll get. So now I change this number to 10 and uh, scroll down here, move the X over. And now we've got, hey, look at that. We've got a scoreboard with actual scores on it. What you're doing is you're taking this, which is the game itself, and you're making a layer of it, which is this. However, when you make a layer of it and you put it over the top, you're gonna crop it to where instead of having this entire game, it's just this little black bar, right? So first you would do it for the first quarter, then you would take the same exact thing and copy that and move it over here. And voila, you eventually move, you have a little black bar. It's gonna be probably huge when you bring it in. You're gonna shrink it down, and then you're gonna move it around, you know, and try to put it in this little black bar. That's why you got that there in the first place. So now you've got multiple layers of the game itself on top of the game and now whenever you skip forward uh you know here's an example like it's third and seven we're gonna let this play out i'm gonna get tackled now watch the bottom watch the third and seven it's gonna turn to first and ten as soon as the game turns to first and ten because if you look at this layer it says first and ten up here so everything's all synced up so as soon as the, the game changes it over the scoreboard is going to change it over too so that is how you do it now, again, I can't teach you everything. And for the people that were just looking for a quick tutorial and wanted to see, you know, oh, you just go to your settings and you change this and that. It's not that simple. It's it's editing stuff. You know, it's more along the YouTube side of things. Uh, if you guys appreciated me trying to explain this the best I could and you hopefully followed along, be sure to leave a like. Scoreboards can be as simple as just taking the little black bars at the top and moving them in, into a different fashion. Or they can be as something as, you know, cool as going into Photoshop and creating your own, but the point being is hopefully it adds to your experience and it adds to your overall quality of your videos because that really is the difference I've noticed a lot is when I make videos with scoreboards, when I make videos with fun edits and actually put a little bit more effort into it, it feels better on my end too. So be sure not to compromise your quality for your quantity. That's something that you kind of learn as you go on throughout YouTube and you start to learn new things as well. So again, if you appreciate the video, please be sure to leave a like. Hopefully this helped you out a ton or a little bit and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.